Hello, Angie here. Welcome to module two. Um, this time I'm going to record it, just the slides. Um, so you'll have to let me, give me feedback on um, if you want me in the corner or not. You won't hurt my feelings if you say no, because that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna start sharing the screen here. We're gonna first stop the video, or just me video. You'll still hear me and we'll share the screen. Hang on, there we go. All right, so module two, from here on out, from module two all the way to module 12, um, you're going to be getting four components to each module and they include mindset, nutrition, exercise, and a stress reduction portion. So we're gonna hit on true total wellness, your mind, body, and soul. So um, I am excited to share all of this with you. I really liked this quote. Um, it kind of piggybacks on from last week when you were working on um, self-talk and turning your negative thoughts into positive, um, positive feelings and talk to yourself. Uh, don't let your mind bully your body. I thought that was just so we are, we, we can be quite mean to ourselves. I'm still working on it myself at times. Um, all right, so today we're going to cover the following. We're going to, everything is, um, we're building on what you've learned the previous week, all right? It's kind of like math. You build on what you've learned before, right? Um, so um, everything with mindset, we're building on that. Everything with nutrition, I'm, it's like a slow drip um, that I'm just feeding you um, these little portions so that it becomes a transforming experience for you so that each um, each uh, item that you learn and incorporate into your life will not seem like a lot of work it'll just be slowly dripped and by the end of 12 weeks you'll have this full cup of water this full cup of um, healthy habits that you've easily just brought into your life and made them habits and part of your life. It's a lifestyle change is what we're doing slowly. So we're also going to um, not only overcome barriers and blocks, but rewrite your history. So you know you could do that. Um, we're gonna talk nutrition-wise about water intake and eating breakfast and setting up your kitchen. Um, then right into exercise, just a little bit about exercise and setting up a home gym and what to wear. And then right into stress, you're going to get to take an assessment in this module and talk about some responses that you can have with stress. All right, so the first mindset issue is overcoming mental blocks. When you bring peace to your past, you can move forward to your future. And I think a lot of us become paralyzed to our past, um, past uh, to our history and what happened to us, but we can actually uh, really um, change those and rewrite it to our benefit. Yes, I need to call Francis. <laughs> um, so, um, Barriers and blocks um, are, they form from memories that have lodged, I'm sorry, this is distracting, okay, that have lodged into your subconscious mind years ago. And um, it's, it, they've been fed, they're like, they're like a seed, and it's been fed um, all these years. You probably didn't even know it, but these, your earliest memories um, whatever you believed in those moments then were fed throughout your life. You chose, without even realizing it, you chose to believe a certain um, body image belief, if you will. You can do this in any area of your life. And then you, throughout your life, you chose to um, hear and see things that supported that belief. And so this is, has become a barrier and a mental block for you to get to not be able to get past, and it's probably what's held you back from success in uh, 
losing the weight or getting having more energy or getting fit and things like that. So it's really interesting. And I think um, the first question I ask you is what was your first memory of your own body image? Um, uh, yes, that's the next slide. Um, and to think back to what those thoughts that throughout your life that supported that body image. And I gave an example and I have lots of examples, but um, I remember mine being um, seeing a picture of myself, my, a team photo of our T-ball team. And I was in the front row. I almost wish I could find that picture. I'm going to ask my mom so I can show you. Um, and I have my head on crooked and my belly is sticking out. I think, you know, it was just maybe the light or something, but I had a huge belly and I, that was kindergarten, uh, probably kindergarten. And I remember thinking, I'm chubby. I have a big tummy. And then throughout the, my years, I remember playing dress up with my cousins and they fit into dresses that wouldn't zip up for me. So I just, yep, I believed that. That's because I'm chubby. I'm fat. Um, moving on to middle school, you know, you take showers and I compared myself to the other girls in the shower and always came up bigger in my mind. Um, as well as even high school days, I'm now no, I love my dad and no fault against him, but he, his nickname for me was Moose um, on the basketball court. He would yell that from the stands, Moose. And, and it's because I was aggressive and I sort of uh, was all over the court and I was just big. Um, but that just fed into that image and that belief that I was just a big girl, big boned, chubby, whatever. So um, what I want you to do is really think about that and then go through your life. Start, and start when you're four or five years old and then just go through your life and think of all of the thoughts and the and the happenings in your life that maybe contributed to that belief. And then you're going to rewrite them, replace them with positive statements. This isn't easy to do. It sounds like it would just, it's almost like what we did before, but it's a little bit different because this is actually going into your memory bank and we're, we're really trying to change that and rewrite it. So it is, it is going a little bit deeper than the last time. Um, and then what I would like for you to do is rewrite your story. So going back to that first body image thought, uh, I want you to actually rewrite the story, actually use the page that I've provided to write that story because just again, writing, like I mentioned in, about journaling, it just uh, creates a different connection in that brain and that subconscious to, to really connect and rewrite the story. And this was actually very powerful for me. I, um, I want you, I, I hope and that this is just as powerful for you as it was for me, because what I want you to do is take that little girl, you, when you were five years old, and I want you to be a big sis, an aunt, a mom figure to that little girl. And and talk to her first, you know, just give her what she needs. Maybe she needs attention. Maybe she needs a hug. Um, maybe she just needs some encouragement. Um, um, you know, so just talk to her, talk to that little girl, show warmth and tenderness to her and, um, and then rewrite the story of that first body image thought and go into great detail. For example, I would, um, you know, go to that t-ball practice and the picture day and um maybe in that story i'm the photographer and i'm telling all the little girls especially myself um how cute i am and how um how beautiful i fit into the rest of the group or something like that just to um, kind of recreate and rewrite that story for you and to give that little girl that's still inside of you the attention and love that she so deserves and needs. I hope I'm explaining this as well as what I mean to. I may have to come back and revisit that one. All right, so that's your mindset. Let's go right into nutrition. Um, we're gonna 
add to what I've asked you to do before, which was um, lemon water and smoothies and the rule of twos. So don't forget those things that I've already told you. And we're going to add now your water intake. So um, this sounds like a lot, but I want you to drink half of your body weight in ounces. So a 150 pound woman should drink 75 ounces of water. Uh, once you start consuming the right amount of water, your body will actually crave it and you will hit that mark no problem uh, just because your body um, just, just uh, again, just craves it. Um, and this, of course, goes into um, having clearer skin and flushing out toxins and it's just good for your circulation and digestion, all of that good stuff. Uh, for me, I needed a tool to help me reach that goal. So I went out, I went to Target, and got myself a 64 ounce insulated cup with a lid, take it with me everywhere. And my goal is to just drink two of those a day. And to me, just drinking two of those is a lot easier to hit my goal rather than drinking eight, eight ounces of water, eight glasses of water, you know, or a four of the, the, the bigger water bottles. That just seems like a lot to me. So do what works for you and find a tool that will work for you. All right. Um, adding to that, I don't want you to skip a meal ever. Um, and eating breakfast is one of the most important meals of the day. And here is why. Um, it gets the gut going for the day. Um, studies have shown that people who begin the day with a balanced breakfast, including protein, carbs, and fiber, tend to eat less junk food during out the day. So a healthy breakfast talks to the body and tells it how to eat for the rest of the day. It also jumpstarts your brain. So it's always a good thing. And um, breaking that fast overnight revs up your metabolism, which perks up your body and brain, prepares it for the day. Breakfast does keep you lean. Uh, so of course, I, it, I'm reading here, I realize, but you may think skipping a meal will help you lose the weight, but wrong. It's just the opposite. By front loading or eating at the beginning of the day, you prepare your body for the rest of the day. And, you know, I have had clients before that tell me that how hungry they are at the end of the night, like at nine o'clock, they're just hungry. Um, and it's usually because they haven't eaten enough calories throughout the day. So if you eat like I tell you to eat and keep your insulin level stable, keep your hormone level stable, keep that metabolism working strong, you will not go hungry and you will not be hungry because you won't be lacking. It's really important. Um, and breakfast skippers actually eat more food during the day and they gain more weight, probably because you're starving and really hungry and you'll just eat whatever's in front of you. And, um, and then of course they have a higher incidence of heart disease and various itis illnesses and diabetes. This is straight from the Dr. Sears Wellness Institute. So I will give credit where credit is due. And let me give you some examples of what's a good breakfast. Um, of course, any of the smoothies I listed. Um, I do have more recipes for smoothies if you'd like them. Uh, the general rule, I, I kind of just make up my own, but if you can always throw in a handful of greens to your smoothies, that is a great way to get your greens. Um, yogurt, I am, I, I want to be I want you to, I want to warn you about yogurt. Please check the sugar content of your yogurt. Um, you want it to be as low as possible and choose the non-fat kind and then add berries and slivered almonds. That's for your protein and fiber there. Um, and then some other examples again, scrambled eggs with whole grain toast. Watch if it just says whole wheat, sometimes it, um, um, uh, it has the white flour that isn't, it's not bad for you. Again, there's no, no, no foods that we're taking out, but whole grain is a better choice than whole wheat. Um, high fiber, high protein cereal with low fat milk and fresh fruit, a veggie omelet. That would be for the weekend for me. I don't have time in the mornings for that. Um, 
uh, avocado, a few slices of avocado. That's my favorite thing ever is avocado toast. Um, yes, believe it or not, you can get whole grain pancakes and make your own um, topped with just berries. You don't need butter and syrup. It's just added fat and sugar. Um, love the soft boiled eggs. I sometimes do six or seven hard boiled eggs on Sunday nights and then they're ready to go for the rest of the week. So they're just kind of an easy to go breakfast. Um, of course, peanut butter and banana slices. You can put that on an English muffin, a whole grain English muffin, or have you ever done this? Steel cut oats. They take forever to cook over the stove, so you will not have 45 minutes to an hour to make them in the morning, I'm assuming. So I have done this. I've done it in the crock pot. And um, if you add the raisins and things the night before, they'll become really soft. So you can add those in the morning. That's the best way to do it. Just do the steel cut oats um, in a crock pot overnight. And they're really, it's really, really good. So. Um, those are, those are some great examples for you. Isn't that great? All right, next, we are going to set up the kitchen. And um, in the next module, module three, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how to shop and what to buy for, but I want you to prepare and organize your kitchen beforehand. So I know it sounds silly. You're probably saying, I am 55 years old and you're telling me to clean out my kitchen? No. <laughs> Um, uh, so do what you can, but if you, if you can kind of get rid of some things in your kitchen, you know, you don't need, uh, 12 spatulas, um, um, and just kind of get rid of things and utensils you don't need, organize your pantry so you can actually see your spices. Um, and it will just make shopping and putting things away that much easier. I actually... Maybe I'm a little too rigid about this, but almost before I go grocery shopping, the first thing I do is I, I go through the refrigerator and the pantry, throw everything out and reorganize it so that when I come home from grocery shopping, it's very easy to put everything away. I know. Um, and then I've made a list of some appliances that I would love for you to have on hand, but please, please, please don't go out and spend a lot of money. Um, I just bought a juicer. So, you know, you don't need a juicer for this program at all. That's just an idea. I still, myself, do not have a spiralizer. That's not even expensive. I just haven't taken the time, I'm lazy, I guess, to go out and buy one. I use a paring um, knife. No, uh, what is it called? A peeler to do my spiralizing. Uh, I make zucchini noodles sometimes and I just use a peeler. <laughs> So you do not have to have all these. It just makes your life a lot easier to um, eat healthier and eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Okay, so that's done with that. All right, we're moving right into the exercise portion. Um, and this I could talk forever about, but I won't. Now, there are four key components to exercise that will be, slow. again, a slow drip, a slow drip formula here, but we'll be going through um, each of these components throughout the 12 weeks um, with cardio. Cardio is like walking, running, swimming. It gets the heart rate up for a certain amount of time. All right. That's what cardio is. Strength, of course, is weightlifting as well as, you know, lifting weights or bands, working with bands. That would be strength training or even body weight um, exercises like push-ups, sit-ups, dips, squats. That would be considered strength. Uh, flexibility, of course, is, is stretching and your those yoga moves and um, some foam rolling that we'll be talking about, getting into those myofactual, um, uh, myof, I just said the word wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, we're going to be getting into foam rolling as well and some balance. Balance is um, something that people forget about and we lose over time. Myofascial, is that the right? Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Anyway, um, and um, anyway, we forget about balance and we lose it over time. So uh, gotta practice that as well for now. Oh, okay, first, oh, I've misspelled create. I'll go in and change that. Um, I also want you to get 
a home gym set up. Um, so not only your kitchen will be ready to go, but you'll have a backup plan if you don't make it to the rec center or the Zumba lessons or anything like that. You'll have no excuses because you'll have a gym at home. And so these items here that I have on the list are not expensive. Um, you can buy them at Play It Again Sports or Target or Walmart. I mean, it doesn't matter where. Um, uh, so these are the set of weights. Some of you may need 12 pound weights as well, depending on how much your experience. Um, you only need one resistance band. Uh, I prefer Spree. I've been through a lot of other bands working at the Ritz, at the sports and rec center at the church um, spree will last the longest and you can only buy spree online on like amazon or something um and so like red is the easiest blue is middle purple is the most difficult as far as the resistant bands go as far as uh, level of resistance so you'll see that when you purchase them um and so, right, I need to move on. What slide am I on? Okay, so we're gonna create that home gym. I'm a little bit lost here. Uh, all right, so we're gonna move right. Oh, okay, and then you also want a stability ball. Um, and that's those big round balls. Um, and so when you sit on it, your knees should be bent at a 90 degree, 90 degree angle, like you're sitting in a chair. So, um, I'm sorry, my dog is barking and I think there's someone at my door. So I'm very distracted right now. I'm so sorry. All right, I'm just gonna let it go. Whew. <sighs> All right, so try to get those things and don't spend a lot of money. I noticed Nebraska Furniture Mart had had all these things there too weirdly all right all right then we're gonna also I just want to have you all prepared so when we hit it next week you'll be ready to go um, so also you'll need to know what to wear because looking good is half of the battle right you want to look good you feel good you'll exercise more so I like this quote it was kind of funny be picky with your clothes your friends and your time ha 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 all right whoops uh, okay, so I guess I didn't make a slide for that, but basically what you want, getting dressed is half the battle. I mean, if you're not in the mood to exercise, if, if you only say to yourself, I'll just get dressed and put on my shoes, that's all I'm going to do. Once you do that, I promise you, you'll go out and exercise. You'll go out and take the dog for a walk, or you'll go out and, um, and do something. So, uh, it's good to get some get something that you feel good in and that's comfortable. Um, so I'm going to talk about this a little bit quickly. You want a good pair of running shoes. I don't care if you're not a runner. I still want you to get running shoes. They're the they're best for your feet. Um, and again, if you have a good pair of cross trainers um, or something like that, don't go out and buy a new pair. But if you are um, looking to get to get to get serious about your workouts, I want you to go to a running store where they can watch your gait, see how you walk, and help you buy the right size of shoe. Most of us get too small of a shoe for working out. You typically have to go almost a whole size bigger um, than what you normally wear for workout shoes. And um, I've learned this the hard way because I used to get shoes that were my normal size of shoes that I wear. And I'm a, I was a runner, kind of am still, but um, I lost toenails because my shoes were too small. So um, it really is important to get the right size and to get fitted for them. Um, so I really want you to get, spend money mostly on your shoes. That's, that's where you want to spend most money. Your feet need to be well taken care of. Then you also want um, a pair of shorts or yoga pants with elastic waistbands. Most of you know this, so I'm going to just go quickly, but if you don't, you want to get wicking or breathable type of t-shirts. I just can't tell you how many times I've seen people come into gyms to work out in jean shorts, a belt, and a collared shirt. That is, you, you're just not comfortable. Um, you want a sports bra that fits well, so spend money on a good sports bra. Um, uh, I, I 
uh, back up to the shorts and t-shirts, Old Navy has really good workout stuff, believe it or not. And they last, like I wash them all the time. So I'm surprised about that. And then you want good pairs of socks. Again, this kind of just goes with a good quality pair of shoes. Uh, the socks want you to get padded wicking type of socks. Don't buy thin, non-absorbent, non cute socks because they will not help you. All right. So there's that. Um, I want to go back to, I skipped a little bit about the exercise about how much to work out this week. I just want you to choose um, what you current, uh, choose what you like to do. And some of you are already exercising, so um, keep doing what you're doing. If you're not currently exercising, I want you to just um, think of what you like to do. Do you like to walk in the neighborhood? Do you like to ride bikes or golf? If you're not riding in the cart the whole time. Uh, playing with the dog, playing with children, playing with your grandchildren, mowing the lawn, whatever you like to do, write it down. And I want you to make sure you get 150 minutes worth of that, your favorite thing, a week this week. Um, that averages out to be about 20 minutes a day if you work out every seven days a week, or if you're only going to do it like five days a week, um, then that's 30 minutes. So 30 minutes a day for five days a week of walking, uh, or, you know, you, it could be a combination of things. You know, maybe you go to the mall and walk around for 30 minutes. Maybe you walk the dog one day for 30 minutes. Maybe you're going to mow the lawn for 30 minutes one day just to get those 150 minutes a week. This is taken directly from Cooper's, um, and actually now it's kind of accepted all over as the, as the right amount of exercise and walking to get each day. It can be 10 minutes three different times in a day. You know, 10 minutes of walking up and down stairs, 10 minutes walking around the mall, and then 10 minutes walking your dog at home. So just to split it up. All right, I, I got a little lost in there and I forgot to mention that is your exercise for this week. And we'll just, again, the drip theory, we'll add to it each week. Yes. Hang on, I'm taping something. Okay, have fun. Okay, great. All right, great. Sorry about that. All right, next one, uh, the last one then is stress. And um, I, uh, we're going to be talking a lot about stress. A, long, a while ago, I used to teach a stress buster Bible study class. Um, and it was something I took on myself because I felt I was under a lot of stress. Um, and so I really kind of became a student of stress. And so I have a lot to share with you and a lot of um ways to help you with your stress. We all have stress. Some stress in life is needed and, and important, and you have to have it in order to be motivated and move on. But too much stress can actually cause, um, uh, cause you to have heart problems and health problems and actually will um, help uh, keep you from losing weight. So let me just uh, explain a little bit about what stress is. It can also be called the hurry sickness. I mean, it's kind of a badge of honor, right? To uh, who's the most busiest, most busy, <laughs> oh, my goodness, who's the most busy. Um, and it's, it's kind of like the balance between what you have to do and the resources you have to do with uh, that you have to do it with. So that means something stressful, um, on Monday may not be stressful on Tuesday because Tuesday's when you have a lot of time. Um, so it just kind of, it's that whole time balance situation. Um, um, it's really not also how much stress you have. It's how often you feel stressed and then what skills you have to deal with stress. Um, it's a problem when the demands on your time and energy go on day after day without let up. Um, that's when you have a problem. That's when you wake up tired. You wake up with a headache first thing in the morning. Um, your body just is constantly in that fight or flight uh, response. And, you know, of course, you've all heard this before, but 
back when we were, you know, in the caveman times, that fight or flight response was to uh, prepare our bodies to run to away from the the saber toothed tiger or the dinosaurs or whatever. Uh, I'm laughing at myself because I have no idea. But um, I mean, I I do know about the fight or flight response, but I don't know if they were running from that kind of animal, I guess. Um, okay, keep going. But so today's fight or flight though, it's different from back then. Today's is that angry boss or overdue bills or traffic jams, teenagers, rude customers, uh, work deadlines, health issues, family demands. It's that indirect stress that, um, that just um, constantly barrages our body and we, um, we become sick and our bodies become tense and we um, then have that mental block and can't lose, can't seem to get well. I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right. So enough about what stress is. We're going to go into what you can do about it. This week, you are going to get to take an assessment of that stress. And um, uh, sorry, I'm, there we go. Um, and uh, it's there's there's two assessments in there one is um the holmes ray scale and it's a social um readjustment rating scale it kind of gives you a scale um, of your significant life events um you know just being married it's oh in this scale i think you score yourself the those the ants the the scoring um totals are at the bottom but um you know, 300 or more means you're completely stressed out. Uh, I think it was 250 to 300 is you're moderately stressed. It's on there. You'll be able to see it. But, you know, just being married is 50 points. You know, so just just being alive is stressful, and that's okay. Um, but a change in a, the health of a family member is 44 points. So th things that you can't control or things that you think aren't stressful for you really are. So I want you to give yourself a break. Having a mortgage over $10,000 is 31 points, you know, so that's something, something to think about. The other assessment you'll be taking is the hassle test. And um, actually they're, they are now saying that daily hassles can stress us out more in the long run than major events. So just your day-to-day -day things, traffic jams, um, being late for appointments, um, trying to make everyone happy in your family, um, you know, things like um, misplacing keys, losing things, um, having your relatives live far away, filling out forms, too much gossip, trouble relaxing, trouble um, it'd be just sitting on the couch too much. All of these things are sort of hassles and that causes stress in our lives. So anyway, um, I think you'll really, uh, open, have some eyes open on, the, on these assessments and, um, make you realize, uh, some ways to, just to be kinder to yourself, actually. Um, all right. So some, uh, sources of stress. Um, I thought this was really well um uh, it could be something as simple as an environment that's too noisy or too cold or too hot um you know where you work you can't sometimes control how cold the air conditioning is on um maybe you're in situations that are um i am really distracted on this recording i'm so sorry um a, a social situation is too crowded maybe you don't like crowds um Maybe you have an overload of too many demands. Um, maybe you have a sense of fear or doubt about the future. These are sources of stress. Uh, maybe you um, still are carrying unpleasant memories from the past, physical illnesses, uh, excessive time pressures, leading a sedentary life, um, you know, just not being able to get up off the couch. These are sources of stress. Um, and then we all have different responses to stress. Um, every, no one responds the same way. So sometimes people's responses to stress are clammy hands and an elevated heart. 
rate. Um, but others um, may feel unable to slow down and relax. Uh, maybe you have an explosive anger or anxiety, inability to focus attention. <laughs> that would be me. Um, frequent sleep disturbances is, is another one. Um, oh, well, yes, aching back or shoulders, increased um, consumption of alcohol. Maybe you have uh, digestive problems, diarrhea, ulcers. Um, again, I already said this, heart palpitations, shortness of breath. Uh, some people enjoy stress and they like the feeling, so they seek out more stress. So these are just different um, assessments to know about what your stresses are and that um, sometimes you may not even realize that you're having a stress response. You, you know, you just think it's normal to have sweaty, pump, sweaty hands and maybe that's not it at all. <laughs> all right. Um, Okay, so there are we're gonna I'm gonna we're gonna go right into how to um, take action to these responses to stress. Uh, so what you're going to do is identify some your top three stressors and write them down in your module. Um, you know, just it, hopefully you'll figure them out from the assessments that you just took. If not you'll you should know them maybe they're the bills the finances the this program <laughs> what, um, you know just whatever your top three stresses are and then i'm going to give you three alternative courses of action to take and they are avoid alter and adapt and i'll just kind of quickly go into each of these and um then i'd love to hear about your thoughts on it so um avoid can you Avoid someone who's constantly aggravating you, if that's your stressor. Um, can you leave work home, leave work or home earlier to avoid the traffic? Uh, can you somehow avoid taking on more than you really need or get out of something that you even you said yes to? Maybe you need to get out of it. Can you leave the situation? That actually happened to me. I was in a very stressful part-time job taking care of a special needs a uh, girl and her parents um, were becoming very difficult people to work with. And so I had to get, I had to leave the situation. It was hard to do. Um, but uh, it made me feel a lot better once I did it, even though it was very hard to do. <laughs> um, you know, another thing I've had to do and avoid was uh, my, just talking to my parents about my job and some of the things I'm doing. Um, it stressed me out and I didn't get the um, the support I wanted or needed. Just a minute. Hey, honey, I'm recording something. All right. Okay. Um, and so I just have decided not to bring that subject up with them, avoiding. Okay, um, the next one is altering. Can you communicate your feelings in an open way? You know, maybe you need to talk to the kids about putting the dishes away, helping with the dishes, because if that stresses you out, always having dirty dishes, or talking to your spouse about, you know, something that's driving you crazy. Um, or write, write them a letter. Uh, uh, write, send an email if you're afraid to talk to them. Sometimes just communicating your feelings. Change the environment, manage your time better, or somehow be positively assertive. All right, um, and then the last way, oh, they also say to rehearse, what, if, you need, if you're gonna communicate with someone about something stressful that, that's bothering you, can you uh, practice it first um, and anticipate what might happen and mentally imagine what you would like to say or do once you, you know, mentally picture that that's gonna happen. I actually had to do that again when I got out of my situation with my special needs girl I mentally imagined what they would do and say, and it came true. And um, I was glad I rehearsed it because I did not get defensive or upset. So anyway, probably telling you too much information. And then lastly, can you adapt to the situations? Or you, you may have to adapt to the situations and tolerate them as best you can. So can you change the way you think about it? Um, you know, I wrote down this, how much will this matter in 10 days, in 10 months, or in 10 years? I, I do this a lot. You know, if, I, if you just get a speeding ticket, say you got a speeding ticket and that's stressful. Well, 
honestly, 10 months from now, 10 years from now, you're, it's not, it's going to be a non-event. So, you know, if you kind of put it into that perspective, sometimes in 10 minutes, is this going to matter? 10 minutes from now, is this going to matter? I said that to parents who were upset with me about their, their kids when they lost a basketball game and upward basketball, they would come and be upset. And I asked them to tell me when they got home in 10 minutes from now, after they got home, I want them to let me know if their kid was still upset by losing the game. Cause most likely they weren't. And most likely they were off doing the next thing, the video games or, uh, you know, the birthday parties, whatever. Usually it just doesn't matter. So I hope you use that technique, the 10 days, 10 months, 10 years from now. Is it really going to make a difference? Um, can you change your actions? Can you slow down? Um, can you seek more information or advice? That's always a good one to ask a professional for advice. And then, or can you change your feelings? So relax, exercise, breathe. <laughs> Breathing and overwhelm cannot occupy the same space. So just breathe and you'll feel a lot better. Sounds so easy and yet we don't do it. So really breathe from your diaphragm and you will feel better. All right, and all of this information was taken from the Cooper Institute personal trainer course that I took. And we all had to um, go through it. And I want you to um, apply one of these tech courses of action to your top three stressors that you mentioned or that you wrote down before. All right. And um, again, get on Facebook, share, uh, share some of your thoughts and feelings. Uh, we'll get better about that. Um, I think that's a great place for support. And I liked this. We're going to end with this um, acronym of stress. Someone trying to repair every situation solo. So we are in this together. Um, and we're here to help each other. So, and I'm here too. You can email me. You can call me. You can join the live Q&As to talk to me. Or you can reach me and the group on Facebook. And with that, I hope you have a great day. And we'll talk soon.